So in view of that, every year, October 16th, we celebrate uh, anesthesia day because that is the day, World Anesthesia Day, because that is the day first time either was successfully shown for, uh, like anesthesia, either was used successfully as an anesthetics. Coming to steps of general anesthesia, there will be five steps basically, induction, muscle relaxation, intubation, ventilation, and reversal. Induction is first we have to put the patient to sleep. Muscle relaxation is even the patient is asleep when we uh, give incision, the patient may move. So you in, uh, in order to have an immobile patient, you have to give a muscle relaxant. To perform the, to control the ventilation, we have to intubate and ventilate. Intubate and ventilation is done by the anesthesia machine. At the end of the surgery, once the surgery is done, we have to reverse, reverse the anesthesia effects. So these are the basic five steps in uh, anesthesia. And the types of surgeries that can be done under general anesthesia, basically all types of surgeries can be done under general anesthesia. But most common are the neurosurgeries, uh, cardiothoracic vascular surgeries, and uh, laparoscopic surgeries. And uh, how you do a general anesthesia is first you have to assess the patient, that is pre-operative, pre-anesthesia check or pre-operative evaluation. Planning, we have to have a good monitors, you have to get ready with your drugs, you have to get ready with your IV fluids, and you have to get, get ready with your airway management. So again, I told you, it will be induction, maintenance, emergence. First, you have to induce the patient with your induction agents, then you have to maintain the patient with that anesthesia, and at the end of the surgery, you have to get the emergencies, get the patient back from anesthesia. And again, postoperatively, you have to shift the patient to postoperative work. Again, this is general anesthetics. That means the, the drugs used which, in, which are used in the general anesthetics. They can be again two categories, inhalational drugs and intravenous drugs. Inhalational, again, gases, nitrous oxide, and xenon. Volatile anesthetics like uh, liquids like either halothane, enfluorine, isofluorine, desfluorine, sevofluorine. All inhalational anesthetics are liquids. Majority are liquids. Gases are only two, nitrous oxide and xenon. Intravenous drugs, that means they can be directly given intravenously. And again, slower acting or dissociate anesthesia having ketamine, opioid is fentanyl, uh, morphine, and all those things. Benzodiazepine, diazepam, lorazepam, midazolam. Inducing agency is thiopentone. These are the most commonly used drugs in the nowadays practice. Thiopentone, methoxone, propofol, etomidate. We use most left and right propofol and etomidate. Thiopentone, earlier days, they used to use for IV induction agent. Now, its usage has been reduced. Next thing. So what is, an, uh, I already told you, what is induction, maintenance, and recovery? So induction is defined as a period of time from the onset of administration of anesthetic to the development of effective surgical anesthesia in the patient. That so induction part which is achieved has to be maintained. Maintain, maintenance provides a sustained surgical anesthesia. Recovery is the time from discontinuation of administration of anesthesia until unconsciousness and productive physiological responses are recovered. Next slide. So goals of anesthesia, general anesthesia, it causes unconsciousness and sedation, amnesia, analgesia, and immobility. So you can see each level at one. unconscious is caused at the level of cortex, thalamus, and reticular activating systems. The inhaled and IV anesthetic uh, agents work on that thing in the central cortex level to cause unconsciousness. They act at the level of hippocampus and amygdala prefrontal cortex to have, cause amnesia, like benzodiazepines. And uh, immobility is produced by the neuromuscular blockers, neuromuscular junction blockers at the level of spinal cord and neuromuscular junction. Analgesia is also produced at the level of spinal cord. Next slide. So before giving general anesthesia, you should be getting uh, equipped with certain uh, equipment. These are the bare minimum equipments that are required to conduct them, uh, to intubate a patient for general anesthesia. Laryngoscopes, your bag mask uh, valve, nasal and oral airways. You need a tape, you need a syringe, you need an endotracheal tube, you need a suction cannula. All these things should be kept ready before giving general anesthesia. Next slide. So this is how an intubation is done. You have to put a laryngoscope. Uh, you have to put a laryngoscope in the uh, in the mouth of the patient and sweep the tongue from left to right. And then the endotracheal tube is put uh, put into the trachea while passing it through the vocal cords. You can see the final position of the endotracheal tube. Once the tube is placed in the trachea, the endotracheal tube cuff is inflated so that it will not fall back. At the end of the surgery, the cuff is uh, withdrawn, the air in the cuff is withdrawn, and the tube is pulled out. Next. Thing. So for work, for having a, uh, to, in order to provide a good general anesthesia services to the patient, we need a good anesthesia machine. This is the modern anesthesia machine. 
the you can see the monitor vaporizer rotameter pressure gauge and uh, all those things mentioned in that so we need to connect the patient once the patient is intubated after giving general anesthesia the patient is connected to the ventilator this machine will control the ventilation and the uh, settings are set, uh, set by the anesthesia next slide so again inhalation anesthetic agents so chemical compounds delivered via inhalation so you have seen in the earlier uh, anesthesia machine there are certain vaporizers the vaporizers are the things which are used uh, for delivery of inhalation anesthetic agents to the patient while giving anesthesia so they are basically chemical compounds delivered by inhalation that can be used for induction or maintenance of general anesthesia what is the purpose during a test or surgical procedure to achieve amnesia unconsciousness immobility and stunted pain response and pain and sensation and response so how they are measured the dosage or uh, this of inhalation anesthetic agent is ca uh, is calculated by minimum alveolar uh, concentration so again blood gas coefficients and bispectral index monitors examples include sevoflurane desflurane isoflurane and nitrous oxide coming to next slide so what is minimal al alveolar anesthetic concentration this definition everybody should know it is depend as the concentration at one atmosphere pressure of anesthetic in the alveoli that's required to produce immobility in 50% of the adult patient subjected to a surgical incision that means what is 1 mac is at 1 mac at one atmosphere pressure 50% of the patients 50% of the adult patients are uh, should not move in response to a surgical incision mac is important to compare the potencies of various inhalation anesthetic agents 1.2 to 1.3 mac prevents movement in 95% of the surgical patients that means when we are giving inhalation anesthetic agents to the patient we'll see on the monitor after inhalation for some time what is the mac attained so there will be a mac monitoring system in the uh, monitor so once the patient reaches a 1 mac there is sufficient for surgical relaxation if you uh, go up to 1.2 to 1.3 mac it prevents movement in 95% of the patients next slide so again mac is the um, uh, inversely correlates with the potency of the uh, inhalation anesthetic agent so that is lower the mac the more the potent is the agent so nitrous oxide in this table it is clearly shown that nitrous oxide is the least potent and methoxyfluorine is the most potent but in surgical practice in routine modern day practice we use only two dr and three drugs isoflurane sevoflurane and desflurane so most commonly used things are isoflurane and sevoflurane next so what are the intravenous anesthetics medications administered intravenously that can be used for induction or maintenance of general anesthesia it is the same purpose is same and examples include propofol ketamine and etomidate in the modern day practice we use mostly propofol and etomidate next so potential complications of general anesthesia can be overdose unrecognized hypoventilation complications of intubation anaphylaxis hypothermia injury due to poisoning and burns malignant hyperthermia burns can occur because of the cautery which they use during surgery complications of intubation like vocal cord injuries post operative sore throat uh, change in the voice edema difficulty laryngospasm bronchospasm these things are uh, included in the uh, intubation complications uh next slide so what is the difference between basically general anesthesia and regional anesthesia you can see general anesthesia patient is uh, connected to the ventilator via circuit anesthesia circuit in regional anesthesia which is uh, most commonly uh, done by epidural spinal or peripheral nerve block the patient is fully conscious and awake and he'll be seeing the surroundings he'll be knowing what is happening but he'll be gynecological and orthopedic surgeries are performed in regional anesthesia